Let's pivot to the Cleveland Browns, one of the issues that continues to linger over the National Football League and will until it's finally resolved is what happens with Baker Mayfield. Here is Miles Garrett, one of the top defensive players on the Cleveland Browns, with his thoughts on this still simmering yet unresolved Baker Mayfield status in Cleveland. Well, people come and go, and you know, this is one of those changes. Now, I hope the best for him. And I hope he moves on and, you know, he does well for himself. I'll never wish ill on, on anyone who I've, you know, went up against or played with. But, uh, no, he's going to land on his feet. Uh, I think Burrow said that as well with, you know, he's he's played well uh, when he's healthy. And I think he, you know, when he's healthy, he can he can do you know, some pretty good things for a team. You know, he's had to find his niche again. I think he has to prove himself. He has to get healthy. And uh, I think it worked out for, for both teams. That really is at the core of all of this, and it doesn't get said enough. When he's healthy, he's good. He wasn't healthy last year. I know. It was such an odd thing, and those interpersonal dynamics behind the scenes overcame the very simple truth that if he hadn't tried to make a tackle after throwing an interception against the Texans in Week 2, it could have been a very different year for him, for the team, for everybody. And they wouldn't have Deshaun Watson now. They would have signed him to a new contract. Presumably, if he had been healthy wire to wire, they would have had no choice. The fan base would have demanded it. And I think at the end of the day, that's why they moved on to Deshaun Watson. Because their best case scenario, Chris, for the Baker Mayfield option year was he plays so well, they have to give him a $40 million or more per year contract. And then they run the risk that they're on this roller coaster where he's got good year, bad year, good year, bad year. They want a guy that's going to be good every year if they're paying $40 million plus. And at some point, they had the bright idea. Let's just go get Deshaun Watson instead. And I really do think that the idea that, that if he did have a great 2022 and they were backed into a corner financially, that may have really been something that helped bring to a head this decision to go after Deshaun Watson. But as you've said, they're trying to have it both ways. They are. They're trying to, they're trying to have Watson and keep Mayfield. And at some point, you know, this guy and, – and, hey, it's a good pitch – Maybe maybe the Browns in their trade talks just need to play that clip from Miles Garrett because somebody is going to get a pretty good quarterback eventually, someday. Yeah, we think. Yeah, I know. I, well, I think I think first off, well, the 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 Brown situation. Yeah, there was something there that they didn't like. Something as far as the number they felt like Baker Mayfield was going to ask for, and him not being worth that. I don't know. That seems to be, or at least what I would think happened in this situation. And I understand, again, having the thought of, hey, when Deshaun Watson's playing, yes, he's better than Baker Mayfield. I mean, when Deshaun Watson is hitting on all cylinders and playing his best, I mean, he's one of the best in the game. There's no question. Now, it's a year out of football. We'll see. And it might be two years out of football, I think, honestly, when it's all said and done here. We'll see where that goes. But, yeah, they did Baker Mayfield dirty. And so has everybody else, really. Cleveland's done Baker Mayfield dirty. The media has done Baker Mayfield dirty. Like the, the the fact that people have thrown him or cast him away as like, you know, we're like a low level starter, I think is wrong. I think and he's coming up in the Chris Sims quarterback rankings. And when you go back and watch Baker Mayfield and when you watch him healthy, like you're talking about, there's a lot of wow factor. There is. There's a lot of things to like about his game. He is an, a good NFL starting quarterback who has the potential to be, in my opinion, kind of a top 10 quarterback. His arm is that special. So, yes, he's getting crushed and killed because he played tough through injury and people are holding that against him. And that's not it's not right. And he is a starting quarterback. And it's amazing that he's still sitting here in limbo because because of Cleveland. That's just the one thing I want to make clear because of Cleveland, Baker Mayfield's career and this season is in limbo as far as what the hell is going to happen. One of the most telling nuggets that emerged in that relationship this offseason came from Joe Thomas, who yeah. reported or said or whatever that that Mayfield could have had a contract worth $30 million per year, and he didn't want it. And people actually reacted to that by saying, wow, you know, basically what an idiot. He didn't – well, no, 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 no. He – no, no. He's not an idiot. He's not a $30 million a year guy no. coming off of 2020. We forget about that, though. We have such short memories when it comes to how good or not good a player may be that we, we just forgot all about – the stretch run of 2020 the fact that they took the chiefs to the limit 
in the 2020 postseason, the divisional round. In the 2021 they, 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 they opener. Did. The 2021 they opener. Again too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, they had the they had the Chiefs on the ropes in the in the first half. It was like, oh no, and one more score here, and they're gonna they're gonna dominate the Chiefs and win the game. And you know, week two, it wasn't much different, Mike. To your point, he looked good. He made a lot of ton of plays. Yes, he made the mistake that you have talked about a lot, and you you're you're probably right. And quarterbacks not doing it, and and he hurt his shoulder. And even with the hurt shoulder, still continued to play good for a little bit. But then other things started to pile on top of that. He re-injures the shoulder. There started to be a few other injuries and banged up. I believe his ribs were a little hurt at one point. So that all kind of came together and caused some issues. But, man, I will say, doing my quarterback rankings, going back and watching this guy, there's a lot of, like, whoa, high-level wow throws that the guy makes. Is he a little bit of a gunslinger and do some dumb things at times? Sure, he does. He's not perfect. But, man, he's a playmaking quarterback, and there's not a lot of those in the NFL. I'm always fascinated by guys who can master the hard parts of their job but trip over the easy parts of it. And I say that because I've made my entire career in whatever field I've been in busting my ass to do the easy parts of the job and make people not notice that I don't know how to do the hard parts of the job. So when you see a Baker Mayfield or a Carson Wentz, guys who have high-end ability but stumble over their own two feet unforced, whether it's making a tackle when you should not be making the tackle or not being able to get along with your teammates to the point where yeah. they have a good feeling about you. Right. Between Wentz and Mayfield, they both have the talent it's just other aspects of the job, the easy aspects of the job, the aspects of the job they should be able to figure out that they don't. And I think there's a lot of, you know what, I hadn't thought about it before right now. There's a lot of similarities between those two guys. I hear in that. that way. They I both are capable of being great quarterbacks because they can do the hard parts of the job, but they can't figure out how to take care of the easy parts, or at least the parts that should be easy. Yeah, I, 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 I hear you there. It's a little different. It's like a same scenario. I, I hear you there. I think it's a little different in that, like, you hear like Carson Wentz seems to not have much of a relationship with anybody in the locker room. Baker Mayfield seems to be, like, social and try to be one of the guys. Now, I don't know. Sometimes it sounds like just maybe, don't say anything to him. He doesn't like exactly. It I might mean, be that the ego might get in the way a little bit here with his with his case a little bit, you know, or, or narcissism or whatever you want to say there. I don't I don't really know that maybe rubs guys the wrong way. But I think that gets back to the point of, you know, at, at some point, yes, Cleveland between some of those things right there. You know, who knows some of the other issues they've had to deal with behind the scenes. The price tag of maybe what he's asking for is why they didn't want to give him that big price tag or give him that big money because of the things you're talking about, we're talking about. If you put that all together, they just might have been, eh, well, let's try to find another option. And and so be it, if that's so. Uh, But, yeah, there's something there that he's got to correct a little bit for sure. It can't just be ego and narcissism. I mean, because... Look around the league. It <laughs> kind of goes with the territory of being a high-end starting quarterback in the NFL. The but there's a the right touch. There's a right touch. You know, right. there's a there's becomes a point where, you know, the really good quarterback sometimes can go, my fault. That was my fault. Even though they know it's the receiver's fault, like they can go, my fault. You know, I didn't throw a good spiral, though. It, it hit you in the face, but it, you, I didn't throw a good spiral. It was a tough ball to catch. Where I think some of the other ones can be like, it's never my fault. And – when I made the wrong decision, no, I didn't. I, that was the right decision, Coach. And I think that's the difference sometimes between, you know, the levels of ego and narcissism, which I should have explained a little bit better there, Mike. Thanks for pointing that but out. But you're right. The, yeah. the, there's a point where you have to flip that switch Just a, a little. little bit. Right. That ultra competitiveness. We've talked about that before. When it's an eight-year-old kid that has to win at everything, we say, Jimmy, why are you being such a little jerk? When it's a grown man who has to win at everything, we admire him. Oh, he's competitive. He has to win at everything. Well, there's a point where the competitive drive needs to take a back seat to, you know, Personal. getting along with your teammates. Exactly. Getting along exactly. with your coaches. Right. Not being an ass to the media gratuitously. That's how you You'll lead win some a players. Game. You'll walk off the field like, you know, like, like somebody just stole your car and you don't go talk to the media that day because you got booed during a game that you won, yeah. but you should have won more easily because it right. was the Lions that you were playing. So that it's not it, – it's not – again, it's not hard, but if it's baked into who the guy is, then maybe it is harder than, than we think. 
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.